Welcome to the first episode of Oxen Network Report, covering the first three and a half months of 2023. My name is Tim Sutinen from PrivacyProShop.com. Opinions expressed on this show are mine alone as an observer, entrepreneur, and staker on the Oxen, on the Oxen Network. I have no connection to the Oxen team. I have asked them technical questions, but that's the extent I know them. I'm hoping to publish more of these reports as things change. Where's Oxen Network now? The big elephant in the room is the, uh, is the Oxen cryptocurrency that has been down in the dumps lately. It has collapsed in value to about 11 to 12 cents at the time of this writing. In bear markets like this, a lot of people become unhappy, and it's been obvious in the commentary on the various Oxen-related discussion boards. Oxen is unusual in the crypto space that it is a functioning Web3 project. There is a community of at least a half a million users on Session and Lokinet that use this decentralized Web3 project. Yet, the market cap of this large Web3 project is barely over $7 million dollars as of today. Oxen's CEO stated that one of the priorities this year is to bring more attention to Oxen, the crypto, and to improve the product surrounding Oxen to increase Oxen's value. Monetization features like Session Pro and LokiNet VPN Marketplace are getting more development time as their use will cause more demand for Oxen. From what it sounds like, those monetization features will remove oxen off the market, likely through some kind of burning process. The details are not public yet. From my vantage point, the oxen team seems to be working to build value in the oxen ecosystem. They published a roadmap for the planned features and improvements a couple of months ago. The development and marketing teams put out regular updates in the form of blogs and YouTube videos. They have an active presence on Twitter. Their YouTube channel has many tutorial videos that were produced this year on most topics pertaining to the software they develop. Oxen's representatives will be at the Monero Topia conference in Mexico in early May. Monero folks are privacy conscious, and Oxen is a fork of Monero, so that's a nice fit. Of course, by now Oxen is a very heavily modified proof-of-stake fork of Monero, so we'll find out what kind of reception Oxen representatives get from Monero's proof-of-work faithful. Making connections with the rest of the privacy community is certainly a good thing. Oxen Network consists of Session, Lokinet, and what the developers call Oxen Core. That includes the Oxen blockchain, Oxen Service Node Network, Oxen Naming System, which is also called ONS, and the wallet. I'll go over those here. First, Session. Session is a good messaging system that really hasn't had any downtime. I've now used it for almost two years, and it hasn't gone down even once in that time. There have been glitches relating to software versions on both service nodes and session clients, but the system itself hasn't had a system-wide outage. My hats are off to the Oxen team. That's not an easy feat to pull off, even if you don't have a single point of failure due to the decentralization of the network. The session clients on Android, iOS, and desktop work well for the most part. Notifications are hit and miss, especially if you don't have Google Firebase or Apple notifications available to you. From what I have read and heard, the session team is working on that, but notifications in a decentralized system are not a simple thing. Also, Session's multi-device experience is not great. If you read a message on one device, it doesn't show up as a red message on another. 
improvements to multi-device are being worked on based on the roadmap and also development reports. I base my observations on reading this year's Oxen Labs blog entries. The major things that the session team has worked on this year are Session disappearing messages. They're enabled, but they don't work quite right yet. Configuration messages. Session handles its settings through configuration messages, and those have been under a lot of work to improve them. This is also where the multi-device synchronization is handled. Groups overhaul. Session closed groups have a limit of 100 members. However, from what I've seen, it starts to break well before 100 members are reached, especially if members are added and removed from the group. The improvements will allow multiple admins more reliability and better moderation capabilities. Oxen CEO mentioned that once groups work better, it'll be a major improvement for session and will likely bring in substantial numbers of users from other platforms that are centralized. Lib Lokinet, that is the integration of session to Lokinet or Lokinet to session, I'm not sure which way it goes. I'm sure there have been other important things too, but those four are mentioned in just about every Oxen Labs report. Session has had several releases this year across all platforms. It's good to see the development have a steady progress, steady continual progress. Working with decentralized software and network is much more difficult than centralized systems. I'd say that it is an order of magnitude more difficult. Features that are simple to implement in centralized systems are much more difficult when there is no centralized server. Then Lokinet. Lokinet is still a work in progress. It works, but is still a product in a beta stage. The Android version is a couple versions old. The Windows version has serious bugs relating to DNS. The Linux ver version works quite well. The most recent version, 0.9.11, is getting pretty long in the tooth. It was released in November of 2022 and hasn't had those badly needed updates, especially on Windows. The team hired a new Lokinet developer early this year, so the development pace should improve with the new talent on board. In a recent AMA, AMA means Ask Me Anything, the CEO said that Android version of Lokinet is on the back burner. There are higher priority projects like the Lokinet VPN marketplace that will be worked on first. That VPN marketplace is of particular interest to us as we run a pair of commercial nodes. Check them out yourself at privacyproshop.com. They are nodes that are running on dedicated physical servers rather than virtual machines for better performance. Give them a try. A part of the slow progress on new Lokinet releases has been that it seems like the Oxen team is using the Lokinet developers in other projects, such as Lib Lokinet for Session and Code Refactoring. I think Code Refactoring means Code Review and Cleanup, to make the code easier to maintain and to understand. Then to Oxen Core. Oxen Network has been solid and the service nodes that I operate have been working without having to spend too much time troubleshooting them. Oxen Service Node Network went through a mandatory upgrade earlier this year, but it was a smaller upgrade than the one that happened mid-year 2022. One of the main changes that happened last year was the allowing of up to 10 stakers per node, up from maximum of 4 per node. Now you don't need as much money to be able to participate in a staked node, as the stake can be divided among more stakers. Wallet 3. This is another important piece of software for Oxen adoption. The current wallet, called Wallet 2, seems to work well for our purposes. PrivacyProShop.com sells both Session ONS names and Lokinet ONS names on our website and those purchases run through Wallet 2. I've seen several mentions 
where the Wallet 2 has been described as being almost impossible to add features to because a change in one thing will almost certainly break something else. Wallet 3 is a complete rewrite of the wallet and should be able to be more easily integrated with other apps like Session. Having a wallet in Session along with an easy method of purchasing small quantities of Oxen would make Session ONS names, Wallet ONS names, and Lokinet ONS names that much more easily accessible for the masses. Currently, the purchase of ONS names requires downloading a separate wallet software, and that isn't exactly the most intuitive way of handling name purchases. Bolting on the wallet to session might also encourage some people to use Oxen for payments. The bolt-on wallet in session, session pro version, ONS marketplace, and VPN marketplace all depend on wallet 3. From what I have been reading, they have most of the Wallet 2 functionality already in Wallet 3. Wallet 3 also makes it easier to integrate Oxen with third-party wallets like the Cake Wallet. Wallet 3 has been one of the most often mentioned items that the Oxen core team has worked on this year. Just like internet domain names are bought and sold, so are ONS usernames, wallet names, <clears throat> and lokinet.loki domain names. The marketplace for ONS names will provide a place for users to buy, sell, and even speculate on the value of session usernames and Lokinet domain names. But again, this marketplace depends on Wallet3. In its quest to become a big-time crypto, Oxen has worked on getting listed in the Ledger Live store. Oxen Wallet now works in Ledger. Ledger requires an audit prior to official inclusion in the catalog, and that audit is currently happening. It's just another one of those things that build confidence in Oxen. I like it. One of the things that has made Oxen Network grow to 1800 nodes is the incredibly easy staking. Staking is built into the Oxen Wallet app. Just choose the node you wish to stake to and click to stake your Oxen coins and start earning staking rewards. Also, Spinning up staking nodes is made very easy and the staking node setup is well documented. Anyone with basic Linux skills can successfully run a staking node. Oxen Crypto. I have heard and seen discussion about reducing the amount of new Oxen created to reduce dilution of the existing Oxen holders. However, I don't know of any concrete plans for that. The current level of dilution is pretty high, 11,800 new coins every day. We'll see what will take place on that front. Oxen decision making seems to be concentrated within the OPTF, that's the Oxen Privacy Tech Foundation. I don't know of any methods for the stakers to be part of the decision making. It would be nice if stakers could have a voice as they have invested their hard earned money into Oxen. What does the future hold for Oxen? What I see as a big deal about Oxen is one word, LokiNet. LokiNet is an onion router based on Low Latency Anonymous Routing Protocol, or LLARP. At the moment, there are very few LokiNet sites or services, and outside of the few VPN nodes, LokiNet doesn't get much use. PrivacyProShop.com is about to launch an anonymous email service on LokiNet called Nemo Mail. Check it out at PrivacyProShop.com. That just might be the very first commercial LokiNet service outside of Privacy Pro Shop's exit nodes. However, LokiNet's potential is high. Number one, LokiNet doesn't require specialized apps to run over it. So any app that can run over TCP IP networks can run over LokiNet and immediately be secure because LokiNet is encrypted on the protocol level. So even plain text communications can't be observed. Number two, LokiNet is based on UDP and LLARP. So it works quite well for real-time apps like video and voice chat and works really well for video and audio streaming services. Number three, LokiNet has lots of unused bandwidth. 
there are a total of 1,800 or so aux and service nodes that make up the network and perform the onion routing. Use of the network is pretty low at this time. Number four, Session will be running over LokiNet soon. That is exciting because it will immediately bring close to a half a million users to LokiNet. That will make the anonymity set of LokiNet vastly better as session traffic will then be indistinguishable from other LokiNet traffic and anyone potentially observing LokiNet will then be inundated with traffic. Currently, Session is using its own Onion routed system called Onion Requests, which is separate from LokiNet traffic. Number 5. LibLokiNet is a significant piece of software that is being developed right now. It is a software library for developers, which allows Session and any other application to use LokiNet for streaming data. This has big implications. Anonymous voice and video call apps easy anonymous file transfer apps, and so forth. LibLokiNet just might be the piece of the puzzle that explodes the use of LokiNet. LibLokiNet allows you to onion route any app. Once onion routing becomes easy, it will find its way to an unlimited number of applications. Number six, VPNs are a multi-billion dollar business. And once LokiNet throughput and reliability improves, LokiNet VPN mode exit nodes will become a viable alternative for VPNs. There are plans to build a VPN exit node marketplace, but the details are not yet public. PrivacyProShop.com currently sells access to VPN exit nodes, and once we know what it takes to join the VPN marketplace, I'm sure we'll be joining it too. While you're at it, please check out our current nodes. You can try them for just $1. Go to privacyproshop.com to get an access code to try them out. Number seven, if and when LokiNet use explodes, the demand for Oxen likely increases too. Because you must have a minimum of 15,000 Oxen for each service node. Maybe at some point companies will be setting up Oxen nodes to provide additional bandwidth for LokiNet. Individuals might jump on board too and get their piece of the staking action. So, I'm cautiously optimistic about Oxen this year. And that's all she wrote. If you like privacy and open source technology topics, including Oxen, Session, and LokiNet, please check some of the other videos on this channel. I've put up a couple of them here for you to check out. Until next time, have a happy day.